Last week, I shared with you the story of my friend and college roommate, John, who, when he pressed me, uh, I admitted that I believed at the time that he was not going to be saved because he wasn't a Christian. Now, I know I'm not alone in having held that belief. For centuries, that is what the church has taught us, that we Christians are the sole beneficiaries of salvation, that it is our job to go out and convert others to our set of beliefs so that they too might be saved. Perhaps that's even what Paul believed when he arrived in Athens. We know some of the pantheon of gods worshipped by the Greeks, right? Zeus and Hera, Artemis and Apollo, Ares, Demeter, Athena, Hephaestus, and so many others. Statues and altars to each of these gods could be found in abundance throughout the Greek territories, which is why Jews like Paul thought these people to be heathen idolaters. The Bible has lots to say about idolatry, and none of it is good. Idolatry is the one thing that gets God genuinely angry. So imagine Paul's surprise when walking through Athens and seeing these idols, he finds an altar dedicated to an unknown God. Now we might think that's the byproduct of a culture that worships so many gods they can't even remember all their names. But Paul sees something else. He sees in this altar the mark of a culture and a people who recognize the work of the divine in the world. And although they worked very hard to name and venerate it, they also recognize that the divine is greater than their attempts to describe it. Perhaps Paul had come to Athens believing that he was bringing the God of Abraham and Isaac to the Greeks. So then imagine his surprise when he found that God was already there ahead of him. That's one of the central themes of the book of Acts. As Christians gather to proclaim the good news, people flock to join them. And when they go out to bring in more people, they find that God is already there ahead of them. Peter learned that when he met Cornelius, a Gentile with no, no ties at all to the Jewish God. Apollos, another Gentile convert, became an apostle before he was even baptized. The church practically had to tie him down and douse him with water so that they could approve of his ministry. The story of Acts is the story of the church finding God in new places again and again, always drawing the circle of the church wider and then always finding God on the outside of the circle. As soon as they think that they have God figured out, God is always one step ahead of them. The prophet Isaiah writes, Truly you are a God who hides yourself. This is not to say that God is hidden, hard to find, and must be searched for, nor that God chooses to remain hidden, cloaked in secrecy or mystery. Instead, it, actively, it means God actively chooses to hide God's own self from us. As much as we would like a God of easy answers and obvious presence, a God that we could point to and say, there he is, we worship a God who gives us neither who instead actively hides from us in order that we might wonder. And yet we still treat God as if this were not the case. We boil our sacred scriptures down to a list of rules to follow or precepts to believe in. We render it down into ten commandments or five steps to salvation or one simple truth to believe. And in so doing, we distill the life out of it until it's nothing more then another supplement to take alongside our multivitamins and our fish oil and our weight loss pills. We want so desperately to believe that the mysteries of heaven and earth have simple, finite answers that will be revealed to us in the fullness of time that we can't fathom that perhaps life and the God who created it are too large and too complex to ever be fully understood which is perhaps why God chooses to hide God's self. A God who is not hidden, who is plain and obviously present, is not a God. That God is a vending machine, 
to whom we pay our respects and our prayers and our devotions and receive blessings in return. That God is a force of nature to be plied and appeased, manipulated and controlled. For if we know all there is to know about God, we know exactly how to get God to do what we want. In other words, the God that is obvious and plain is an idol, made from human hands, even if it's not made out of stone or wood or gold. It's not unlike the idols to Zeus and Hera and Ares and Adonis and all the rest. And perhaps that is how Paul was able to recognize the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in a Greek altar dedicated to an unknown God. <clears throat> That altar showed Paul that the Greeks were not idolaters, as he may have supposed, but people like him, groping for God with fish scales covering their eyes, but open to the possibility that perhaps the divine was more complex than they could imagine. Suddenly, all those altars with graven images were not idols, but incomplete ways of experiencing and attempts at describing something ineffable, something so mysterious it can't be fully known. Our God is a God who hides God's self, you see, but not in, a, in an attempt to be obscured from us, but for the opposite, in order to be revealed to us. We worship a God who hides divinity within humanity. A God who hides the light that is the life of the world in darkness and death on a cross. A God who hides good news in the foolish and unbelievable story of a rabbi who changed water to wine and multiplied loaves and fishes and rose from the dead. Because God hides from us, God can be revealed almost anywhere. Jesus tells his disciples today that he is going to be hidden from them, but that when he is hidden, he himself, along with the God who abides in him, will become even more fully known. He promises that when he sends the next advocate, his friends will know her because although she is yet to arrive, she already abides in them. That doesn't make any sense. This is not the work of a God who can be readily or simply understood. It's the work of a God who remains hidden and mysterious. Because God hides from us, although we can speak with confidence about those things which God neither desires nor condones, things like suffering and pain and death, we can nonetheless see God revealed in those things. Because even in those things, God is hidden. Anyone can see God's majesty in the beauty of a sunrise or hear God's joy in the laughter of a child. But it takes a true abiding relationship. The kind of relationship that Jesus gives to us with God. To be able to see God revealed in a cancer diagnosis or a divorce or a pandemic or a sealed tomb. Because God abides with Paul in Christ, Paul is able to see God hidden in the anonymous altar in Athens. And because he saw that God was already there, he was able not only to teach the Athenians something new about this hidden God, he was also able to learn something new about that same God himself. If the source of all life can be hidden in death, cannot the God made known in Christ also be revealed in Muhammad, or Moses, or Krishna, or Buddha. This is what we mean when we say that Christ is the only way. That Christ is all the ways. At least all the ways that lead us to an abiding relationship with God. So where else might we see this hidden God revealed? Well, I think right now one of the most important places to look is in the COVID-19 pandemic. While some might be tempted to say that this is a test by, sent by God to strengthen us or a punishment sent to correct us, I myself am under no such delusion that the answer is so simple. 
this pandemic is bringing death and suffering to millions. It's stoking the fires of fear and xenophobia. It's putting stress on our already tenuous society, fractured as it is by poverty and oppression and polarization. And yet, at the same time, it is also teaching us the value of community. It's clearing our skies and our waters in a way that we have not experienced in decades. It's bringing our attention to the problems that we have to solve and offering us solutions that we have not been creative enough or brave enough to consider before now. Both of these things are true and neither of them justifies the other. Such is the nature, the complex nature of the hidden God. For example, our congregation would unquestionably prefer to be worshiping in person on Peacock Hill Avenue right now. And yet, how many of you watching right now, worshiping alongside us, are here exactly because we are not? How many people are able to engage with this worshiping community because we are on YouTube and not in a building in Gig Harbor? Both of these things are true. That our community is diminished by not being able to gather physically, and that it is strengthened in a new way of being the church together. One truth does not justify the other, but both truths reveal God at work. In this pandemic Easter season, the crucified and risen Christ is teaching us something new about the God we have always known. We are now learning what it means to recognize God in the cross as well as the empty tomb. Death is not just the necessary evil to get to what lies beyond. It is part of the good creation that God has made. This novel coronavirus is as much a creature of God as you or I. We cannot know God apart from this virus and the creation in which it exists, just as Paul could not know God apart from the witness of the Athenians. Perhaps one thing this teaches us is that God's salvation doesn't always look like we imagine it will. But that doesn't mean that God is not acting for salvation. Remember Jesus' opening words in his discourse from last week. Trust God and trust me. Just because we don't see God doesn't mean God isn't there, working through everything that happens. It just means that God is hidden. That hiddenness, believe it or not, is good news for us. Because it means that there is nothing and no one that cannot or will not reveal the love of God to us. Not even pandemic or crisis or death. The truth is that we have not been orphaned. That although Christ is not here, he is here. Although we cannot see the Advocate, although we have not yet received her, she abides with us. The one who has left us is coming to us and is already here. We know him and we have seen him. Trust him and trust God.